Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, we're going to learn about the design thinking process and how to take your ideas and make them into reality. It's also a really great way to incorporate upcycling, which basically is taking an object and finding a second life use for it or repurposing objects. So this is awesome for two main reasons. Uh, first of all, it lets us think about our consumption and generation of waste. So how can we prevent stuff from ending up in our oceans and in landfills as garbage and also it allows us to save money which is awesome because then you can spend it on other things sweet <laughs> all right so what about the design thinking process what does that entail so usually it's defined in five main steps the first one is empathize or understand so who are you designing for what is your product going to be used for who is going to be using it is it for yourself your family your community the general public and what do they want what do they need so once you understand your audience then you can actually define your problem and so that's actually what are you trying to solve what type of problem are you trying to solve and so once you understand your audience that'll kind of help you navigate the approach that you take to the problem. And once you understand the problem, then you can start brainstorming ideas, or <laughs> as the step is called, ideation. You can uh, start coming up with ideas for how to solve that problem. So for this, let your imagination run wild. It can include things that are not possible, that maybe we haven't invented yet, that's totally cool, but maybe temper that with some things that you know you can build. So just get all of your ideas down onto paper. And once you have a fairly extensive list, at least like five to 10 ideas, then you can start prototyping. And prototyping is my personally favorite phase because that's where you can incorporate upcycling. So take a look around your house, office, home, etc., and see what you have available to you. Um, and also, you know, be gentle with yourself. Don't spend too much time on one prototype. It's not going to work exactly as you want it to the first time, and that's okay. That's actually what you want, because then you can learn from that first prototype, and you can build on it. So once you have your first prototype that sort of works, or, you know, does something that you want it to do, then you test it, and based on the results from the testing, you can redesign it. And so it's really important to see what works and what doesn't work and to learn from your mistakes and to make it better. And so typically you'll go through an iterative process of test and redesign, test and redesign, and maybe even go back to the beginning of the design thinking process to you know, really evaluate, are you meeting these criteria? Is your audience happy? Is your problem defined? So really think about that. And it's okay if you go through four or five iterations, the more the better. So what does this actually look like in real life? Well, here's an example of a project that I built entirely from uh, materials found at home, as well as um, the electronics are all from this Arduino starter kit. And so this Arduino starter kit is about 40 bucks, which is a really great deal because it has an Arduino Uno in it, as well as a bunch of other components that you can use to build things. So for me, I build a lot of different projects, so I'm always trying to cut costs in terms of what I spend on each project. So since I can't build an Arduino on my own and I can't build a motor that does exactly what I want it to do, I'm always trying to look around the house and see what I have available to actually build uh, a functional prototype for whatever project idea that I have. So this is one example. It's a motion-controlled Shake the Maze game. Um, to see this project in action, check out this silly little video that I made uh, of its demonstration. And so this was all built using materials that I already had on hand in my house. And um, I've also kind of laid out some materials around here that I tend to use a lot. Tupperware containers are incredibly useful for a wide variety of options. And you don't have to purchase those. You can uh, look at some food items that come in different containers. So for example, this is an ice cream container. And I usually save all of these because they're super well made and they have a nice little screw lid top. And also one of my favorite things to do is to go through old toys that friends and family are getting rid of and look for things with moving parts. Gears can be really hard to make on your own, so you can kind of uh, upcycle a toy or uh, take different parts off of the toy and use it for completely different uses. And plus, it's just really fun and a great exercise in creativity. 
I'll leave it there for now. And my question to you this week is, what are the different objects that I used to build this motion-controlled Shake the Maze game? Uh, let me know what you notice in the comments below. And feel free to ask questions, too, if you're curious. To answer uh, the, video, the question from the last video, I asked, what is atmospheric pressure? So if you watch the video, you'll know that pressure is just force divided by area. And so if we're talking about atmospheric pressure, that's due to the air that, for example, is weighing down on my head. So in that instance, the surface area would be the top of my head, and the, f the weight of the air would include all of the air from my head to the upper atmosphere. So, you know, the air is going to be more dense closer to my head, but as you go up, it's all going to be weighing down on me. And so actually, cumulatively, that's a pretty big effect. So we don't really notice it on a day-to-day -day basis because we've evolved to adapt to it. Super cool. Please let me know if you have any questions about that explanation or about the design thinking process and upcycling. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.